This is a slideshow explaining how I made the battery for my electric ATV conversion. This graphic shows a side view schematic of the battery pack. Given the space limitations and the scope of how the ATV was to be used, I settled on an 18S 24P arrangement with 18650 lithium ion batteries. If you have seen my previous videos for my motorcycle and snowmobile, the concept is somewhat similar, albeit an improved design based on, based on some learning from the previous builds. I decided to buy one Tesla Model S battery module rather than buy Panasonic 18650 cells. I found a module that had had a coolant leak that damaged some of the cells. In the end, I scrapped 19 of them, mostly due to corrosion. They probably would have worked, but I didn't want to take a chance. I needed 432 cells for my battery. I got 425 out of the Tesla, so this required me to use seven extra Panasonic cells that I had left over from my previous projects. I was able to get the Tesla cells at a little over $1 a piece, whereas the Panasonic cells are usually over $4. So, how did I salvage the cells? I removed the aluminum side reinforcements and separated the module every other longitudinal row of cells. There's enough space to allow me to use a vibrating saw to separate the rows. I then took the double rows and just twisted and broke apart the rows into individual cells. This is a picture of what the cells look like with most of them having this hard plastic on each. I took each cell and removed the plastic using the wire brush wheel on my bench grinder. This is a picture of the cells after the plastic was removed. It probably took approximately the full day for me to salvage, salvage one module. I saved over $1,000 salvaging a Tesla module. So that trans translates to over $100 an hour savings for my time. Not too bad. The battery build starts off with these individual interlocking plastic battery holders. This is a picture of the assembly of these pieces. This picture is out of my snowmobile application, but the process is the same. And you can buy these through a number of suppliers on Amazon. In this case, the sheets are 15 cells wide by eight cells deep, top and bottom. This creates a layer five modules wide with each module having three rows of eight cells for a total of 24 cells per module. This shows the construction of one sheet with five modules. The positive side has fused nickel strips, three cells wide by eight cells deep, and these are sold by battery hookup and are spot welded on. The negative side has three cells wide nickel strips sold by many companies that you can find on Amazon, and they are spot welted on as well. Seven short pieces of solid eight gauge copper wire were soldered in place and used to interconnect the positive and negative sides of the modules. Two pieces of six gauge braided wire were soldered in place and used at the ends of the sheet of five modules to interconnect to adjacent sheets. The small red wires were used to plug into the BMS sensing wires. So three sheets of five modules and one sheet of three were made for a total of 18 modules. How they were installed in the battery box will be shown in a few minutes. The right side of the old engine compartment was used for the battery location. The left side housed the electric motor and the 4x4 gearbox drive unit that can be seen in the ATV build video. A base mounting platform was welded in place to support the battery box. CAD, also known as cardboard aided design, was used to lay out the detailed size and shape of the battery box. This mock-up was completed prior to battery build just to make sure that planned battery modules would indeed fit appropriately. The actual battery box was constructed 
out of one eight inch thick aluminum welded in a shape to maximize space utility yet have access for battery maintenance. Here is just another view of the same battery box, not shown yet as a cover that will be installed to fully seal the side of the battery box. Two vents were installed, one at the bottom and one at the top, to allow any warm air in the box to circulate out. Each of these vents, by the way, also had a screen to keep any insects, in, insects from going into the box. The open battery design using the interlocking plastic pieces appears to be a good design to ensure that batteries are well ventilated. As a side note, this open air battery design, assuming 444 cells to make it equivalent to the Tesla, is actually only 7 eighths the size of the equivalent Tesla Model S module, which is liquid cool. If I thought it necessary, a fan and or ram air could be used, but I have found this not necessary while using and not necessary while charging, as I only charge at 5 or 7 amps depending on the application. I do have a 15 amp charger and find that this also does not create any heat problems. I don't use it as it tends to blow my circuit breaker as my freezer is on the same circuit, so it has nothing to do with the battery itself. As you probably saw in the video, I also use what I call an anti-range anxiety switch. It has three positions, off to fully isolate the negative side of the battery, position one uses the BMS, and then position two goes around the BMS for emergency out of power situations if the BMS shuts down for either low battery voltage or a BMS sensing wire got disconnected, unfortunately. I use perf board to line the box for insulation from the aluminum and also shells for the individual battery sheets. The holes allow air to flow and is actually quite fireproof if a cell happens to have a heat problem. In the upper left is the back side of the anti-range anxiety switch pre-wired with the BMS awaiting battery installation. This is the battery compartment with everything installed. Four gauge wire connects the battery to the system. I use foam blocks to ensure each sheet was tightly installed. I use bullet connectors between the BMS sensing wires and the individual modules for, for ease of maintenance. I use the perf board in between each layer. And note that the cam locks are around the perimeter. This allows for easy assembly or removal, removal of the battery compartment cover. This is an inside view of the battery cover. I used 1 8 inch thick by half inch wide high density foam around the perimeter to seal the box lid and quarter inch high density foam in the cover center for insulation and to hold the battery modules tightly in place. And lastly, here's a picture of the completed battery box with the lid installed 